Yeah, we can we can do the non-action items. It's just we wanted to allow a few others, as uh, Member Lazat pointed out, to participate. But they're not here yet. Doug, you've got a speaker card. Oh, consent. We can't even approve the consent calendar. Okay, um, Doug, I can't guarantee you that any more people are going to be here anytime soon. Would you like to speak now or? That, that would be fine. Okay, why don't you? Come on up, please, and speak on item one and then item number four. Okay. Thank you, Chair, and uh, good afternoon, board members and staff. For the record, my name is Doug Muirhead. I live in Morgan Hill. Um, I wanted to speak to you about uh, a couple of objectives I would like you to have when you do uh, bid uh, processes and contract awards, and then also. Doug, I'm going to interrupt you and interrupt myself. Anybody here wish to speak about anything not on the agenda? Not seeing anybody. Thank you. Go ahead, Doug. <laughs> um, and then the, the other area where I would like to uh, encourage you to have an objective is actually the monitoring of contracts with some sort of performance standards. So let me start with bids and uh, bid process and, and contract awards. I really would like to see uh, a process that provides enough information so that a member of the community can understand how the award process flowed, who participated, how uh, um, the various participants were ranked and evaluated so that when you come out with the final result, we can understand how you got there and feel that it was both comprehensive and fair. I actually saw a staff report from a different organization that said we talked to a bunch of people and Company X is our favorite, and here's the resolution where you'll allow us to do work with them. I found that a bit lacking, and I do not want to see that in this agency. When it comes to performance uh, of uh, the vendors, so with respect to the contract, and hopefully not if you have to do a termination, we really ought to understand what they're being measured against. Um, you know, objective. Uh, criteria would be preferable, uh, subjective would be better than nothing. But again, I saw a, a staff report where a company was being terminated and the language in the staff report said they didn't sufficiently meet our standards and so we're, we're stopping doing business with them. There was no detail in the original contract to be measured against. There was no uh, evidence that they talked to the company to try and you know, uh, get different behavior. And I think in, in that sense, you know, that's, that's not fair. You know, we need to do a better job with the people that have agreed to, to try and help us out. So those are uh, my comments on uh, item number one, the uh, contract uh, policies. I'm very pleased to see that you have one. Thank you. And for the I record, like we, have, we have your letter as well. Okay, good. Yep, thank you. And then uh, my good luck is that item four is a contract that you're trying to award, and I find that it fails to meet those standards. Um, the language uh, in the staff report gives uh, five specific sections in three different documents and then says so, and because of these sections, uh, you know, we're going to go with Santa Clara County for grant services. The implication when I read that was that somehow this was a mandate, but if you actually look at those five sections, four of them talk about um, you're allowed to contract for services and we'd like you to be wise in spending our money. And the fifth uh, reference just says you're allowed to uh, do contracting with other permittees. So if you were looking at this from my point of view, um, you would say, well, okay, you're not mandated to use them, so who else did you talk to? And how did you rate them? and why did you choose this particular agency? Uh, now, I happen to think quite highly of county parks. I also think quite highly of the Open Space Authority and the Water District. Uh, and so, again, I don't object to the business going to county parks, but I don't understand why, and I don't understand who else might have been in contention. You know, was it broad enough uh, in terms of our search that um, qualified people had a chance to express an interest. So that's my objection to uh, 
to the staff report that goes with item four. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. We've got Andrew here. We still don't have a quorum, so I think what uh, would be best to do right now is um, we have a little ceremonial. Where's Ken? Where do you? Ken's back there. There you go. Um, I think there are, are the items up here. Okay, you want to come up and join me as the two chairs, implementation oh, sure. and governing board. Mr. Sharp, can you join us? have a proclamation but I won't read the proclamation I don't you, I know that you've worked in in this area for 40 years and ended up with a habitat conservation plan which was a monumental multi-year effort that I got to um, serve with you on most of the time I know that you had a previous career in, in Morgan Hill and then somehow you got to North County up in Palo Alto <laughs> and but at least you finished your career down here in Morgan Hill with the habitat conservation plan We've really enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed the experience and I, I don't know if I've served on another board where I learned as much about stuff that I didn't know about as I did on, on the formation of the Habitat Conservation Plan. So, uh, you know, like the proclamation says, we wish you all the best in your future endeavors, whatever they may entail. And I understand they don't entail Habitat Conservation Plans, but <laughs> thank you. Thank you for thank all you you've done. Thank you very much. Here's your proxy. <laughs> 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 well, at the same, along the same lines, Gilroy, we are very, very uh, appreciative of all the work you've given, all the work you've done for us, <laughs> especially because uh, we, um, myself, I came in kind of late, halfway through, but I uh, saw all the information that you provided to all of us, a, a lot of good guidance and, and a lot of flexibility between the groups. And we're very, very appreciative of all the things you've done on our behalf. So. Thank you very much. Actually, I'm going to give you a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Let me no go next. We have two others as well to go there. Um, Ken is president of the Board of Supervisors, and on behalf of the uh, county, I've got a commendation here signed by everyone in appreciation. And I would like to read some of the tier for those of you that don't know the extent of this man's experience and knowledge and history and, and all that you've done for, for so many. Throughout his career, Ken Schreiber has modeled a high standard of professionalism in his conduct and through his decisions, consistently demonstrating and supporting the value of excellence in public service. And whereas Ken Schreiber served as a land use planner since 1970 and was Palo Alto's director of planning and community environment from 1981 to 98, during which time he was active in county and regional transportation issues, including serving as a founding member of the Santa Clara County Congestion Management Agency. Mm -hmm. Technical Advisory Committee. Ken Schreiber managed a series of smart growth related studies for the Mineta Transportation Institute of San Jose, at San Jose State University and continues to handle land use, transportation, and environmental related work for public sector clients. And whereas Ken served as program manager and then interim, Gordon? And interim executive officer during the development and initial implementation of the Santa Clara Valley Habitat Plan which provides for a long-term coordinated program for habitat restoration and conservation for 18 plant and animal species throughout Santa Clara Valley. Yada, yada. Ken, thank you, thank you very, very much. I've got to say, um, I got into office, and I think my first day was Pearl Harbor Day, and um, December 7th and my first vote, and my first vote in my first hour on the board was whether or not the county should join the Habitat Conservation Plan. 
And uh, so I was a county supervisor for, for an hour and it was a 2-2 vote and it was my turn to vote. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm glad I did what I did and I'm very proud of your leadership. And, and as Mayor Tate said, I, I knew nothing of this now and I know a whole lot more because of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, on behalf of the Santa Clara Valley Water District, both uh, individually and collectively, we want to uh, give to you this resolution of appreciation. Uh, Director Schmidt, unfortunately, has a double booked. He's at the uh, San Francisco uh, Creek JPA, so he just he couldn't make it up here. Uh, but he did want me to extend his, um, his appreciation for everything that you have done, as I do. Um, he, he served uh, or you know, served on this committee as a as a member of the water district, but also as a public advocate when when he uh, before he was elected. I served on on uh, on behalf of the uh, Gilroy actually uh, as mm -hmm. a uh, as a member of the legal team, and we attended all of the uh, the attorneys' meetings. So I had uh, the opportunity to to learn a lot from Ken in that regard, and then of course coming here on the board. So I just want to wish you the best in retirement. I'm getting close to doing that myself other than the water district. So I know uh, how much it, uh, what it feels like to, uh, to uh, get your life back. So on behalf of the water district, on behalf of Brian and me uh, personally, I want to thank you and I want to give you a hug too. <laughs> I also have a commendation for you, Ken, from the Valley Transportation Authority. And, and like uh, my supervisor said, my first month at VTA was in December of 2000. And the first month I had to deal with 101 widening and what we had to do with the Fish and Wildlife Service to actually open up the 101 widening project. So um, we're very uh, grateful that you were able to push this project through because it's been extremely challenging over all those years. And it's extremely rewarding to see it being implemented and, and that we've gotten to this point in time. So thanks a lot, Ken. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> and uh, say a few words, please. I'm sorry, there's one more. There is one more? Yes. <laughs> so we have a little token from the agency for Ken helping me out also, as well as he helped this plan get done in the first month, he stayed on a month longer than he anticipated, and I am forever indebted for that, helping with the transition. And uh, he was very, uh, served as a mentor to both Jill and I in the early stages of this uh, agency's uh, existence. And uh, so we just got him a little token of a uh, box, and there's a little surprise in there for it's you, under too. It's under the 50,000 limit, right? Yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> Four nine nine nine. Oh, thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. First, maybe just a general thank you. Um, in looking back on this project, and some of you are looking back on on more of my career. Uh, my wife and I and our two children arrived in July of 1974, and as most of you know, I was director of planning, community, environment in Palo Alto for 17 years. In looking back over those years, and I, I continue to want to put to rest the idea that I am I have retired, um, I'm still poking around on things, um, pro bono and maybe contract. Um, but in looking back on all of that, a couple of observations regarding the the habitat plan process. First, in terms of the 40 years, it clearly was, from my standpoint, the most challenging and rewarding um, major effort that I've, I've been involved in. It's, I mean, from my standpoint, there's a legacy aspect to this that feels very, very good. But I think also what comes out of this uh, and the various comments is that this has been a successful process because it's been a team process. It's been a team process right from when I arrived at the end of 2004. Uh, ICF came, or Jones and Stokes, now ICF Jones and Stokes came on board in July of 2005 as the first consultant. 
But it's been a team process. It's been a team process of elected officials. My compliments to all of your staffs. Uh, I don't, wouldn't want to go back and count up the number of Friday meetings, many of them all-day meetings, some maybe, maybe a majority were only half-day meetings, but week after week after week after week, and people were willing to stick with it, willing to work hard, representing their jurisdiction, but also working together as a team. And I think we saw that with the liaison group with the elected officials, we saw it with staff as a management team, we called it, but, but working together as a team. Uh, certainly the consultants were also part of that team and the wildlife agencies. I mean, we couldn't have done this without Kay Goody's drive, basically. She, she willed this through her agency. I mean, this, this, I, my colleagues in other jurisdictions would come up to me and say, Ken, when are you going to get done? We can't get any staff time until you're done because you're, you're the first priority. Um, so my thanks to, to all of that, and that's, that's really what it takes to, I think, pull something like this off, is this team, this team type of effort. Um, I was at a meeting yesterday and talking to some colleagues who are into their 13th and 15th and 18th and 20th year of trying to get a plan put together and adopted. Um, and even though I grimace when I say it took us eight years from the time that consultants came on board, uh, that actually is rather fast in the, in the world. Um, so it's a team effort. My thanks to, to every one of you who is part of that team, and you are all part of that team. Um, the only person that I've, so I've, so I've decided not to call out individuals. That, that's a slippery slope. There, there's one that I do need to call out though, and, and she's not here. She's in her office in Menlo Park, and that's my wife, Penny. Uh, we had our 46th wedding anniversary last fall and, or last September, and she has been the backstop in all of this. And you, you folks haven't seen that, but she's the one that, that picks me up and sort of puts me back together when I come home and say, this, this is just not going to work. And no, no, it will. And she's been, the, she's been my backstop, not only in this project, for an awful lot of other projects and work in, in all of these years. So uh, in abstention, my great thanks to Penny. Thank you all. I will gladly take, all, take away the loot. Um, and as I told Ed when I came down today and told a couple others, I'm not following what you're doing. I don't have a desire to follow your website or the agendas or whatever else because this operation is in very good hands. And I feel like I've, I can leave and finish up, uh, finish up my task and it, it's in very good hands and I think this is just um, adds to my good feelings about coming to, it, to the end of my role in all of this. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. All right, we now have a quorum. Um, we can resume our uh, agenda item that we have. We have consent items that wait, wait, wait. one through four. Let's please take roll call. Chair Wasserman? Here. Board members Fitzwater? Here. Lazat? Here. Herrera? Tucker? Here. Crabtree? Here. Siebert? Here. Courtney? Here. Thank you. And now the consent item one through four, we've heard from public comment. We have another speaker cards or people wishing to speak. Um, I, I would ask Mr. Sullivan if you could please respond to uh, questions especially raised regarding item number four. Yes. Um, my understanding is, is that Parks has a dedicated uh, grant writer that's been extraordinarily successful in obtaining grants uh, for the County Parks Department. And we wanted to tear off of that experience and expertise. They also are extraordinarily integral to the implementation of the plan through land enrollment, through uh, uh, they're a partner in land acquisition. They've uh, Don Rocha, who is the lead county parks staff person, attends all the TAC meetings, all the co-permitting meetings. He understands what the plan's about. He's been involved with it uh, for many years, like a lot of people in this room. So we have confidence that we have chosen the, the right entity to represent us in uh, finding funding that's a good match for the plan. 
if uh, if we're mistaken in that, which I don't think we are, then we will, uh, you know, review that contract and go in a different direction when this contract expires. But I have complete confidence in county parks and their ability to get additional funding for us. Thank you. And and if I may, just yes. to add, um, the uh, many of the comments or the the concerns that were raised by uh, the speaker are items that will actually be addressed when we issue specific RFPs and when we deal with the plans and specifications and the contracts for certain projects. So what's before you um, on the consent calendar item is really sort of the overview policies and operating procedures, which we actually patterned on the procedures that are used by most of the co-permittee members that form the JPA so that we're in sync with, with those entities as well. That clarification, appreciate that. And with that, I'll look for a motion to approve the consent item. I, consent. I do have one comment, yes. can I come present? On item one, and this is probably for our agency council, on item one under general contract and procurement procedures on page nine, uh, it says number 1C has contract authority acceptance of real property and the last line says uh, to be used for public purposes and presents no significant toxic liabilities. Could we say toxic or other liabilities because I don't know if there's other liabilities that might be beyond toxic. Sure that's an excellent point we can certainly do that. Okay and I think that also then needs to be changed on page 17 also. Okay we'll catch that thank you. Okay. And with that, would you like to make a motion? Can we approve the consent calendar? Thank you. Second. Oh, motion and a second by um, Commissioner Lazat. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. That was items one through four. We'll now move on to item number five, which is the consideration of ordinance number 201501. Uh, the uh, Board approval of ordinance number 2015-01. Yes. yes please. Mr. Sullivan. So the whole intent of this is just to get the, um, when the fees are automatically increased, the date of that to be consistent with the fiscal year budgeting of all the co-permittees and the agency itself. Um, the, the, uh, the automatic adjustments. Excuse me, excuse me. Yes. Rob. Ken, could you please come back? We have one more presentation for you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I apologize for being late. Yes, 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 yes. Be on the other side of the microphone. You can't leave that soon. <laughs> uh, they keep dragging you back in, Ken. What's yep. that the line from The Godfather? <laughs> so, Ken, um, on behalf of uh, the City of San Jose, City Council, the Mayor and City Council, and, and the million residents of the City of San Jose who would like to be here today as well to thank you for all the wonderful work you've done in helping us establish uh, this Habitat Plan and Board. Uh, thank you so much and we wish you the best on, on your next endeavor, but help, thank you for helping us get this off the ground in the best possible way. I present that to you. Thank you, I will not repeat what I said before, but only to summarize it that this has been a team effort from the beginning, uh, elected staff, consultants, wildlife agencies, and I'm hoping that that continues on because I think that's the way to try to move this type of process. How we got to where we are now and how to move it forward. So thank you very much, you, your colleagues. Um, it's all been greatly appreciated. I assume you guys all got a picture, but I'll grab one. With him before we go. No, we didn't. Why don't we do one team picture? I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah. You want to do that? Does anybody have a camera? <laughs> Everybody has a camera. We got phones. We got phones. We got phones. Yeah. Better take so. Yep. Better take it. And you had a few other um, plaques, right? I have a large stack of them. Oh, we can hold some of them up. We're going to hold one of them up. Yep. Here we go. Yep, there's one there. Where do you want to take it? Well, we want to go to the
together like you like each other. <laughs> One, two, three. Thank you, Mayor Tate. I'm glad you thought of that, Rose. Um, I had a yeah, ton of money. <laughs> I didn't remember. Mr. Sullivan, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome, <laughs> Chairperson. <laughs> um, so just to um, reiterate, it's just to have consistency. That's there. There was nowhere written in the plan June 1st. Uh, we we talked to Ken. We looked over all the documents. There was no logical reason for June 1st. It was a date that was just chosen. July 1st is, is a better fit with all the budget cycles of all the organizations. So that's so that's why we're recommending that the, the implementation board would consider a recommendation to the governing board to approve this change. And this is the only change happening in the ordinance. Yeah. Thank you. I don't have any other speaker cards for any other items. So I'm going to assume no one wants to speak unless you raise your hand or submit a card or something. So uh, given that, I look for a motion to Second. recommend. It's motion made <laughs> and seconded. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. That passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Item number six, authorizing the executive officer to execute a contract amendment to the professional <coughs> services agreement with ICF Jones and Stokes. Yes, and this is uh, tearing off of the original 2005 contract that um, Jones and Stokes, ICF Jones and Stokes had with uh, Santa Clara County when this planning process started. Uh, this, this, will, this is phase 11 of, of uh, so they don't call them an amendment, they call them a phase. So this is phase 11 of that original contract. This will be the last phase where I would say my daughter went through several amendments <laughs> you <laughs> you could say that yes okay, I got it. <laughs> thank you <laughs> and so um, this is um, the tasks are I should have brought my reading glasses here sorry but the the work program for phase 11 includes program management um, land acquisition management planning, monitor, uh, monitoring program planning, monitoring program implementation, restoration planning and design, and uh, permit streamlining. Uh, this will be the final amendment to that contract. As I noted, in the future, the Habitat Agency will contract directly with uh, a third party for such services. Next summer, the Habitat Agency will solicit proposals from third parties for plan and imp implementation services, establishing a direct contractual relationship with a firm or entity that will be performing the work. Um, and just to give you a little background on how we arrived at this uh, number of 925,000, um, back in uh, March and June of this year, uh, ICF supported Ken in budget planning for this fiscal year. Uh, during this time, they identified and budgeted for a work program task to ensure cost-efficient habitat plan implementation and permit compliance. This budget was vetted during a joint board workshop approved in June 2014. And the work programs are, uh, as identified, uh, uh, there were 10 of them, and they're reflective in those uh, seven tasks, reserve system, land acquisition, enrollment, the 
the RGP stuff, restoration, burling owl, management planning, training, habitat agency capacity, annual reporting system uh, for the permit compliance, and um, the in lieu evaluation for county parks and OSA lands. Um, there was a, uh, ICF reviewed these same priorities with me over three working sessions this past summer. And uh, then they uh, had some internal discussions with their own staff concerning the 10 priorities and early implementation tasks. Uh, ICF then held a series of meetings with me, review their tasks, and we changed some of the priorities, cut, cut some of the things off, and uh, it will will be implementing them in the future and then uh, they submitted this proposal to to me which are, is now before you thank you thank you again no one from the public wish to speak on this item I'll look to our committee members for any comments or a motion and the motion I have a question regarding uh, executing the contract yes please so so in, in relationship to the uh, regional water quality control board coordination I see that there's nothing in the contract is that um, are we not expecting any work to occur on that in the next year, or is it that we don't need the consulting yeah. services for that? Or? Oh no, we we do. I'm um, I'm. How can I say this gently? I'm talking to some other consulting firms about providing the, those uh, services. So so there's some other firms that that have uh, proposed some interesting strategies to both move this and the RGP process from the bottleneck it's in. So I'm sort of, I'm very pleased with the work that ICF's been doing, but I'm exploring some other ideas to try to figure out a, a way to get both the RGP process uh, back and running and also to figure out a strategy for coordinating 401 and possibly even 1600 permitting with uh, both the Central Coast and the Bay uh, Regional Boards. Thank you. Any further discussion or a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Motion to approve and second. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. It's kind of a segue, Mr. Sullivan, into number seven. Yes. I believe that concludes our action items. Then we'll have a report from you at the end. Um, and we now move on to item number seven which for the public's knowledge is long range habitat agency staffing, a non-action item. It's a discussion we're to have with you. Correct. And um, among us. And what I'm interested in, just to, to kick this thing off, mm -hmm. and you mentioned this is the 11th and final with ICF, yes. and that you were looking at other options, and that kind of tied into what I was looking at. What I'm interested in doing is keeping our cost for the HCP, HCA, Habitat Conservation Plan Authority, as low and as stable as possible. And we have that contract that we have for the services that are rendered that admittedly are needed and quality service and all the rest. I don't dispute that. I look in the report here where you bring up staffing 10 and a half people and increasing staff. Mm -hmm. I just want to express as one committee member, mm -hmm. my concern, you know, if our costs are here now, mm -hmm. if you want to raise this cost, then I need these costs to go down mm -hmm. so that the overall bar of costs doesn't go up. And if you, you know, you said you're looking at other consultants, you said you're looking at whatever other individuals, whatever your master mm -hmm. plan is, which I'm very interested in hearing, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we're not adding on to the expense that we currently incur mm -hmm. for the similar type of service. Understood, okay. Chairman Wasserman. Yes, I would, I share that uh, philosophy. And part, part, part of this, um, uh, letter to the board was just to start the process of discussing uh, what the board collectively thinks on how we should move forward with sort of that balance that you were describing. And the point yeah. you bring up, you know, you can't just, I think Roland, my, my staff member, meant you can't just flip a light switch and not have a staff member one day and have a qualified, educated, informed mm -hmm. staff member the next day. Mm -hmm. That takes training and process and, and search and to mm -hmm. find the right person and the right fit. So invariably, you've got an overlap, a duplication of services, if you will. Correct. And I understand that. I'm just trying to make yes. sure we all have that same goal. Um, 
with with the ICF task, uh, m most of the items that would be in that task 100, so that that task one we could call it, um, I vision could be performed by agency staff. So most of that, it's like a 300. Fifty thousand dollar line item for that particular task. So that so that's where the balance would come with that task. With tasks uh, two, three, four, and five, there there would be some some overlap um, where we would still need ICF or whoever to provide support, but there would be more direct uh, um, staff involvement with some of those tasks. But ultimately, the overlap would be minimized or yes, done away with. Okay. At, at absolutely yes. Please, and I didn't mean to monopolize the conversation. Other questions? Nope, you want to hear? Yes, Rose, please. So um, as you point out in, in your letter that um, we're looking at um, workload doubling in the next 18 months. And if you're, if you're thinking about adding staff, what kinds, in the near term, it looks like we need to get moving on this. When do you mm -hmm. see us adding um, additional staff the first? Uh, um, I was hoping if, if the board deems it wise uh, this summer, if not sooner, to add one or two people and to bring um, the uh, management assistant, uh, the, the duties performed by Jill, she's currently three quarters time, to bring her on full time. So, so that's sort of what I was thinking. So the 10 and a half is just what the, they say in the plan. I don't envision adding 10 and a half people in the near term. It, at some point when we start acquiring land, getting a reserve land manager point person and and probably bringing on uh, somebody who would help me with some of the, the sort of the policy development side you know Valerie's great uh, she helps me a lot with that but so I I could see where there would be um, initially just just one or two people added and bringing Jill on full-time is sort of what I was thinking in the near term and then evaluating things as we go on and we acquire land and we, and we take on more responsibilities, manage more grants and, and proceed with uh, uh, more complicated uh, program uh, implementation tasks like land negotiations and stuff like that. Thank you. Yes, please. I, I think it might be helpful if we were to see sort of the five-year plan Yes. Um, in, in terms of number of people, mm -hmm. rough idea mm -hmm. of the, you know, the that how many tens of thousands of consulting services there were, and then what percentage that kind of management or administration of the programs represents of the overall cost to the programs? Because I'm sure as we are going to be dealing with, you know, landowners, developers, whatever, they're going to want to look at it and, and you know see are we in sort of the, a reasonable range for administrative costs versus the cost of the actual acquisition and eventually hopefully management. So I think that might be something useful when you come forward to, to you know, to actually add the positions. Yes, that's a good point. Thank you. Yes, please. Chair, sure. Commissioner Lazat. Uh, I agree with uh, uh, Commissioner Siebert about some sort of a five-year plan, and I think you know I think that's your intent. But I but I think it's uh, very important that you continue to articulate exactly what it is that you need, when you need it, so that we're not behind the eight ball, we're not hiring on a short, I've mm -hmm. been around long enough, and I think some of my colleagues have, to have to where staff comes in and put something in front of uh, uh, board members and say, this has to be done at this meeting because it has to be done at this meeting. And so mm -hmm. that kind of, uh, you know, looking mm -hmm. forward, articulating, I'm, I'm out now looking for this, I need this because we don't have it in the consultants or we're mm -hmm. trying to reduce the work of the consultants and actually hire somebody mm -hmm. for this um, mm -hmm. to, to fill this role long term. So yeah. I just think continue to articulate what you need and how you're going to fulfill those needs in, a, in an appropriate uh, time frame for us to, to, to really react to it. I think is probably critical. Okay. Uh, yeah, this, this letter was more just to sort of get a sense and I think you're providing the feedback I was hoping I would get from you all. So thank you. And I will put together both a short and a long term plan uh, part of it right now is just the cost of looking at how much we pay for ICF, which is no uh, no criticism of them. They're, they're doing a great job, but I, uh, the program uh, manager, the project manager, we pay two hundred forty thousand dollars a year for that person. I I know we could get someone for 
a, a highly qualified person for 100 to 120,000 less than that with benefits. So, so part of it is just crunching the numbers and saying we could cost effectively do it, at least that task. Some of these other tasks, there, there were, there's going to have to be more intensive uh, cost benefit analysis to figure out what is the best way to go. Yeah. Thank you. Mem Member Tucker. Uh, actually, I was thinking along the same lines, what is your short term plan? And if you felt the need to to hire Jill full time now because you need her, then present us next meeting and, and that's fine uh, while you're waiting for, while you're gathering your facts. Great, Good I'll, point. I'll do that, definitely. And saving on the 240 to 120,000 as soon as you can too. That's yeah. Ab <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. As compared to that quarter extra for, for Jill, yeah. Yeah, that was the point of my first question. So uh, if you have urgent, you know, immediate needs that are gonna save us money, I think we need to move forward with those and then put together that more formalized longer term plan. Mm -hmm. And I guess I see consultants as important when you don't have that ongoing need for them. You know, when you're, they're gonna do something that is specialized and subject matter expertise that we're not gonna wanna pay to keep on board all the time. They're very appropriate, but if we have something that we need on a regular basis and we can we can um, obtain that, you know, for a lot less. And definitely, I think we should look at bringing them on. I think that's a great point. And that's sort of the, like with Burrowing Owl, we would still want consultants to be the point people in that. We don't have the expertise, but something with sort of the day-to-day -day running of the agency. Yes, thank you. Agree. Yeah. All right, I don't see any other comments here. Anything else you want to share with us regarding this, uh, this item? No, no. Okay, that, I believe, ends our agenda. Seven, eight. Um, we've got, let's see, future implementation board agenda. That's what we just handled. Adjournment, any other comments from any committee members? When's our next meeting? Our next meeting is December 24th. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, You'll be here by yourself. <laughs> January, isn't it? In January. We skipped December, I think. Yep. January 15th. Okay, well, I want to say happy Thanksgiving to everybody and happy holidays and uh, enjoy, enjoy your holidays with your family and friends. Thank, Thank you. you. January 15th, this location, this time. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Okay. Oh, uh, just a... Yes, meeting not adjourned. Yes, yeah, sorry. Sorry, Chairman. Uh, just a quick uh, update with you on, on a few items. So uh, the Habitat Agency was a recipient of $85,000 uh, local assistance grant from Department of uh, State Department of uh, California State Department of Fish and Wildlife for NCCP implementation. It was uh, an assessment of, uh, and the task will be assessing alternative grazing monitoring methodology. Uh, also met with uh, Senator Jim Bell or Beal, excuse me, and representatives. Bell. He goes Bell. Oh, oh, it is. I thought so, but then, but then when I looked at the spelling, I said it may. may Bell. Okay, <laughs> thank you. And uh, Congresswoman, uh, uh, representatives from Congresswoman uh, Zoe, uh, Zoe uh, Lof Lofgren's, right? Zoe. <laughs> Just Zoe, right? Yeah. And, it, yeah. and it's Kaeper Kaepernick. Yeah. On the 49ers? <laughs> yeah, Kaepernick. Kaepernick. Yeah. Just I helping would, you with the local being, names. Being a <laughs> Buffalo Bills fan, I wouldn't know what a good quarterback go. is, so I can't, I can't pronounce. <laughs> Kelly. Jim Kelly. Yeah, See, we have there, to go way back. There yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> good Irish name there, so e easy to remember. Um, it was a C, uh, so I met them at a TNC-sponsored event at Sierra Vista, sort of talking about all the good work that's going on and how both the federal and state government can help fund uh, uh, more conservation planning in uh, Santa Clara County. Uh, PSC update, we're making some great inroads with Caltrans and PG&E with uh, utilizing the PSC process. There's two projects, uh, Ferguson Road and uh, Heckard Pass, where uh, Caltrans would like to use the plan to mitigate impacts for. PG&E, I'm meeting with them on December 3rd. I'll find out more then. Um, there's a Caltrans property on State Highway 152 that they want to donate to us and we're beginning that process of what that means and uh, you know, them paying some management costs up front to help with that. Uh, land enrollment update, uh, Calero, uh, the county park, OSA's Coyote Valley and the UTC site will all be working to enroll those properties into the reserve system um, next year and hopefully have it completed in early 2016. Um, 
We're also updating all the information on the geo browser. That's that online um, uh, GIS uh, map that we have to help uh, applicants and the private citizens to sort of figure out potentially what kind of impacts uh, development on their property would have and sort of lays out some of the initial ground rules for them. There's some updating and changing that we're doing on that. And the RGP, I sort of went over that a little bit. Uh, we, I contacted uh, the point person for the core twice on that. Uh, they're just not processing our application. It, it's at the bottom of the pile. Um, Kay Goody went to bat for us. It's not getting anywhere, so we're gonna have to elevate pressure on them and, and taking things to the divisional level and see if the LA or Sacramento office potentially could process our uh, permit for us because San Francisco office, it's just not a priority for them. It's unfortunate and I'm disappointed. I let them know it was critical for the partners. It was, a, it was part of the reason why the city of San Jose signed on and it was the first time they'd heard that, but it, it didn't change anything. <laughs> So I was, I was disappointed. I was hoping I'd get some sort of timeline that they could get it done. And, and we're, we're at the home stretch here. It's, um, there's um, the applications in, all they need to do is review it, provide some feedback and, and wrap it up. So it's not like we're starting the process. The application was submitted in May, so. Wow, thank you. Any other comments? Yes. So. If Earlier. you're going to take it to a higher, uh, you're taking it, you said Los Angeles or Sacramento? Potentially. We'd, we're we're going to have to meet with the the divisional level, uh, the folks that are at the uh, the division. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure about the organizational structure of the core completely, but from what I understand, there's a divisional office that oversees all the California offices and the Albuquerque, New Mexico uh, office. So we're going to take it to that level and say, hey, is there any way you can help? There's something that we did in Placer County, too, that I'll explore with the board. Um, they, Placer County paid for a core person to review county projects. They shared it with Butte County. Hmm. And that person was also helping with the integration of the, they were doing a, a PGP, a program um, a level permit with the core. Uh, uh, to integrating that with the HCP so they so that person was the was helping out with that and and the county just paid for that person's time so that's something potentially we could do offer some it wouldn't be a lot of money either because it's like I said it's in the home stretch so just say hey we're willing to pull pay for somebody's time we just need this to get done now yep. thank you yes member Lazat uh, it, uh, the water district deals with the core all the time and, and what you're saying is nothing new to us but if you need assistance in just figuring out the the dynamics of, mm -hmm. of you know where where divisional is who's who who reports to who uh, Melanie Richardson at the water district uh, knows them inside and out as does our um, uh, uh, chief with regard to capital projects who's Norma Camacho but um, Melanie really does know know that and and the idea of uh, perhaps paying for is is a good idea uh, but um, she might be of some assistance in helping you reach the right person because they 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 have a new command there now uh, they uh, they changed over twice the fellow who the the general colonel who was here locally is now back at divisional in washington and so that's been helpful for us at least somebody back there understands what needs to be done in this local area with regard to what we're trying to accomplish. And so Melanie uh, might be a, a source for you. Um, and uh, if you can't, you know, just the water district, if you can't get to her, let me know. Thank you. Sure. Good suggestion. Absolutely. Anything else? Does that conclude your report? We'll yes, catch it does. Off. Thank you. Anything from legal? Nope. Council? Nope. Thank you very much. Meeting adjourned. Great. No future agendized items. <laughs> no. <laughs> he skipped all over the agenda. I'm local.